So my name is David Thompson, and I'm a senior vice president in the real world and late phase research division uh, at Cineos Health. Cineos is a unique company that combines both contract research organization uh, capabilities with a complete line of commercialization services. So we have a complete lab to life uh, model for um, evidence generation and product commercial commercialization. Um, what I do with um, our clients is I assist on real world research design. So I focus on the really difficult problems of ensuring that the studies that we design and conduct for study sponsors actually will meet the evidentiary needs of the health system stakeholders to which they're targeted. So the interesting thing here is that FDA has signaled strongly various ways in which they are receptive to the use of real world data, real world evidence for regulatory decision making. So traditionally they've done so for things like ongoing safety surveillance in a post-marketing sense, but now they're actually considering use of real world evidence for um, product approval um, and in particular label extensions. And so um, recently Pfizer, for example, gained regulatory approval, or, or sorry, a, a label extension for their product iBrands, which was brought to market for the treatment of breast cancer. Obviously, all of the clinical trials were performed in women, but there's a small segment of the patient population that are actually men. It's a rare disease in men, but it does occur, and the product has been used in real world uh, practice in men. And so Pfizer submitted data on those real world treatment patterns and the safety profile of the product and FDA actually granted the label extension. So that's a very important development and we'll be looking for more of those examples as well. The other area is in single arm clinical trials. So a couple of companies have been submitting single arm trials using real world data sources to identify external control groups that could be then compared to the patients who have received the intervention in the trial. So there's a number of examples of that that have um, been successful as well and we'll be seeing more of that in years to come too. Yeah, from our perspective, it's absolutely crucial. And the reason is, is that historically, real world evidence generation um, did not follow the typical way in which clinical evidence is generated, which begins with engagement with FDA and EMA to ascertain what kinds of efficacy measures will be of interest, the patient population of interest and so forth. Only then is the study design and executed and thereby the results are thereafter um, shared with the regulatory authorities. Historically, real world ev evidence generation did not follow this process. And so study sponsors would meet with their consultants and they would design studies thinking they knew what the state health system stakeholders were interested in, but oftentimes it's a, a game of hit or miss. And so what we always advocate is that you engage with um, the health system stakeholders first. It's not just regulatory when you're talking about real world evidence, it's payers at the very top of the list, health technology assessment agencies as well, patient organizations and clinicians. So you have five different health system stakeholders that are going to have different evidentiary needs. And it's important to talk to them up front such that when you develop your body of real world evidence, you have a good sense that it's going to meet their decision-making needs. This is something that's really interesting and it, it kind of cuts both ways. So uh, what this refers to is the greater proliferation of real world data sources, such as electronic health records and healthcare claims data, and the growing availability of those data sources for use in research purposes. But um, in addition to that, you have to have the skills to be able to analyze the data. So then you have these um, data platform technologies that are being brought to the market, and there's a number of uh, vendors out there that are um, uh, developing these platforms. And what they do is make it easy for those who don't have programming expertise or a lot of analytics um, training to be able to, with a few clicks of a mouse, um, 
you know, dive into the data, start constructing a cohort, analyze a few measures and, and look into things. So the reason I say it cuts both ways is that that democratization and, you know, the wide spread usage of the data by a greater number of people is a good thing, right? We don't want to you know, co co restrict it to a, a set of, you know, scientists who can only analyze the data. But at the same time, if you don't have the required training on data analysis, then these tools might be able to, you know, get you into some trouble. It's like handing the keys to a Ferrari to a 16 year old who's just passed his driver's test. Trouble's going to <laughs> follow. The key thing here is to ensure that um, the data are collected um, in the right way, that they match with the therapeutic area and the intervention um, being considered, and that the analytic techniques are appropriately sophisticated and rigorous, such that the data will have um, as much uh, quality and validity as possible. The trick, though, is to recognize that the typical standards from, from regulatory include two things that you can never get from real-world data. Number one is randomization to treatment assignment. So in real-world data sources, treatment assignment is, is done by process of a doctor and a patient meeting together and deciding upon the best uh, treatment course, depending upon the patient's presentation. In a trial, of course, it's a coin flip. You're, you're randomized to drug A or drug B or drug A and placebo. So um, there's a lot of benefits to randomization from an analytics perspective that you'll never be able to recreate with sophisticated um, uh, methodologic techniques for analysis. So that's a problem. Blinding is another one. So in real world practice, patients know what drugs they're on, so do their doctors, everyone knows what, what drugs they're on. Blinding is something you can't replicate in real world practice either. And so those two aspects of clinical research in the traditional sense are something that is going to be the, sort of the final hurdle that prevents regulatory bodies from using real world data sources as much as they might like to. Um, because the comfort level is, is going to be tough to, to get to that point. Virtual research is, is something that I'm very, very interested in at this point in time. I'm doing a lot of presentations um, on this. And what it refers to is the use of technology to essentially um, alleviate the burden of uh, traditional research approaches on study sites and investigators. So it takes the power of the patient and places it at the center of the research process and essentially says, look, we're not going to have to require patients to come into a clinic whereby you know, they get poked and prodded and measured and, and various things happen to them. We could simply send measures out to their connected devices, whether these are their smartphones, whether these are Fitbits or other kinds of wearables, whether these are you know, sensors in the home, including you know, scales and so forth. There's a variety of ways in which data collection can be removed from actual uh, research sites and take place out in the real world. And that's a really exciting development. So we're going to see more of this approach as things progress. Why? Because, first of all, it's trendy and there's a lot of ability to make use of these novel technologies. And so everyone's interested in it just from a curiosity standpoint. But it's also the case that um, site management and investigator um, you know, management in trials is a really expensive aspect of the research process. And so to the extent that we could eliminate or at the very least you know, dramatically reduce the burden on sites and investigators, the costs of doing the research will, will fall as well. No one has a crystal ball, but there's some clear trends that we can identify. And I think there's this confluence of the greater proliferation of real world data sources and the widespread availability of these data sources coming into the marketplace for researchers, for study sponsors, for patients themselves to analyze the data. 
the technology element with these data platforms coming into, into Vogue. And using all these things with cloud-based computing, I think we're going to enter a realm in which we have sort of a continuous research um, and implementation of results as part of this quote-unquote learning healthcare system. So imagine going to your uh, physician and, and being in the context of a discussion with that doctor in which you have a particular health problem and the diagnosis is rendered. And as that doctor is looking at his or her iPad and clicking things into the electronic medical record, that information along with all of your other information, your demographics and your clinical history and you know, your health seeking you know, behaviors and so forth, they go up to the cloud where they interact with some risk-based modeling, um, predictive analytic modeling, such that decisions are, are made based on a whole lot of data, not just your own case study, but all the patients that are like you. And the predictive analytics contribute back to that interaction in real time um, a, a suggestion on what therapy you would receive. So the doctor might say, typically I, I prescribe drug A in this particular um, uh, situation, but the, the data and the methodologies are suggesting that maybe we should try drug B instead. It might be better for you as an individual. So all this comes together with things like, you know, all the buzzwords out there. So the learning healthcare system, patient centricity, precision medicine, all of these things can come together such that there's not sort of healthcare and research, but they all blend together and become one. So that's something that we might be seeing in the years to head.